Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Classroom Champions Live. Today is Movement Monday, and we are so excited to bring another one of our amazing athlete mentors directly into your living room. As always, you can post your questions and comments right in the comment box on either YouTube or Facebook, and myself and my guest for today will answer those as soon as we can. And also, if you like what you see today, you can find many, many more videos on classroomchampions.org. So today, you guys, I have a very special guest. His name is Rob McLeod. He is a six-time Guinness World Record holder. Welcome, Rob, and he is in the sport of Frisbee. So Rob is Frisbee Rob. He's also a motivational speaker. He's a Frisbee ambassador. He lives in Calgary, Alberta. And he also has 12 world championships and the Canadian distance record. Rob, welcome. Thanks for being with us today. Good morning. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. So Rob, I'm going to show everybody at home a quick video of what you do because it's hard to imagine exactly how far you can throw this Frisbee. So tell us a little bit about your sport. Yeah, so Frisbee is a lot like track and field. There is many disciplines within the sport of flying disc. Uh, a lot of people have heard of ultimate Frisbee. There's also disc golf. There's freestyle Frisbee. The original disc sport is called Guts Frisbee, which is a lot like Red Rover. Throw Frisbee at another team and see if you can catch it. Throw it as hard as you can. You can also throw Frisbees to dogs. My favorite <laughs> is what you're about to see. So you throw the disc and try and catch your own throw. So wow. I'm a five-time consecutive world champion in that. I also have world records for this on ice skates. So if you like to skate, you can also do this on ice skates. Um, there's just so many things that are possible with a Frisbee. And a lot of it is because of how a Frisbee is designed. We like to say that when um, a ball dreams, it dreams it's a Frisbee because balls fall and Frisbees fly. Um, <laughs> and it's very dependent on the wind. So a sport like discus or shot put or javelin, the wind helps, but you're gonna get a lot of distances out of a Frisbee because of the way it's designed. It's designed you know, kind of like the wing on an airplane. So when you put spin on that disc and throw it into the air, you never really know what's going to happen sometimes. So um, you can also do trick shots. Kids love when I throw Frisbees in the basketball. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I was actually on the first try, but a lot of times it takes a few tries. And then this was a couple of years ago, throw a Frisbee and then skate and catch your own throw. So being, being Canadian, growing up figure skating and playing hockey, uh, when I learned to throw Frisbees, I already had the skating skills, so then it was pretty easy to combine them together. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. So my favorite one for sure was uh, when your dog caught the Frisbee. That was my favorite one. Tell us, you have you have a dog, right, who plays Frisbee with you? Yeah. Yeah, so Davey was a very special dog. He um, passed away two years ago, unfortunately. But oh, I'm so sorry. the new dog I have now, so my friend trains the dogs, so I'm kind of like the professional jockey. So <laughs> he trains the horse, the jockey rides the horse. So my friend trains the dogs. I throw Frisbees to the dogs. I get to hang out with them. He's standing on the couch looking at me right now, wondering <laughs> when are we going to go play Frisbee? Um, so he's four years old. He's a border whippet, very fast, loves to sleep and chase and catch Frisbees. And you'll probably see him walking in the frame during this, uh, during this talk. So. Awesome. Well, those who are regulars to Classroom Champions Live know my dog, Winston, also loves to play Frisbee. But we're going to do some fun activities today. First, I want to say good morning to a couple people who are watching. Lori, good morning. Thank you for being here. Lori is one of our incredible Classroom Champions teachers. And then we'll say hi to a bunch of people as we go on today. Um, so, Rob, you're going to show us a couple tricks, right? But what if you don't have a Frisbee at home? For sure. Um, so the original Frisbees were literally anything you could throw. And so way back in the early 1900s, people were throwing ice cream lids. So if you have like a Tupperware lid, you could even try that out. Um, paper plates don't work so well. But if you have, you know, a Tupperware lid around, most people have a Frisbee. They just sometimes don't know where it is. Um, I've had a lot of kids tell me that, you know, they were crawling around in their attic or in the garage trying to find the Frisbee after I was at their school to try to try and get it. Um, Frisbees are, do not cost that much. They're only a couple of dollars, but make sure you get a good disc. That's really the biggest thing that I, that I stress. You know, if you play basketball, you're not going to buy a square basketball, right? It's not going <laughs> to go very well. So if you buy a disc, they might look similar, but they're not all the same. Um, and so very important. If you don't know what a good disc is, you can ask me, just search Frisbee Rob. Um, on my website, I have links to where you can get all the good Frisbees, but again, they don't cost that much. Um, you could spend a bit more if you wanted to on, you know, more tricky discs that mm -hmm. can do some cool things like spin it on your finger. Ooh. 
yeah. so this one would be about fifteen dollars. But for just a basic disc that you want to play catch with, it's only about five five to ten dollars. Got it. So I have two Tupperware lids here. This one's square. So I'm thinking <laughs> you wouldn't recommend this one. Is that right? Oh, uh, it adds a little bit of a, a circle. Challenge. I have a circle one as well. So so I'm going to join you in your activities with my circle Tupperware that I just found in my kitchen this morning. Um, but I, I want to know first, before we get started, were you always into Frisbee or did you do other things when you were a kid? That's a great question. Um, a big thing that I promote when I speak in schools is physical literacy. I think it's super important to try as many activities and sports as you can. So growing up, I didn't actually play Frisbee until after high school. Um, growing up, you know, I did pretty much everything you can think of, soccer, basketball, hockey, track and field, figure skating, volleyball, badminton, rugby, um, pretty much everything I could growing up. And then when I got into Frisbee, I realized that Frisbee, because it had so many things, just like track, that I could still do a lot of different activities just now in one sport. So I primarily only play Frisbee, but that's like a heptathlete saying that they do the heptathlon, right? They're doing seven different things. So yeah. it keeps you very busy. There's a lot of things to train and to train for and to do. Um, and the nice thing about Frisbee is if I'm driving along and I see a nice field, I can take a disc and go out and throw and play catch, mm -hmm. right? There's not a lot of sports. You, you're not really going to play catch with yourself with a ball, a football. Yeah. Or football. <laughs> um, you're not really going to go probably and throw discuses for fun. And so, you know, Frisbee is a toy, but it can also be a sport, a, co a competition. Very cool. Well, you're going to show us some of the things that you are doing right now while you're at home for training, right? So we're going to start with what, balance? Yeah, let me just switch to my other. Okay, sounds good. While you're doing that, I'm going to get myself set up. So you guys, if you are at home and you, you either go find your Frisbee or go find a Tupperware upstairs and uh, join Rob in his, in his Frisbee activities, all right? Cool. So... There's multiple ways that you can play with a disc. And so what I'm going to do today is teach you some of the foundations. So it's kind of like if I give you a skateboard, right? A lot of people would stand on the skateboard but not really know what to do with a skateboard. And so that's kind of what we're going to go through today is what are some things that are possible with the Frisbee. So this one can be a lot of fun. I do this with kids as young as three years old, uh, all the way up to adults. And so you're going to try and balance. You can either balance across your hand either way. You can also try and balance on four fingers on three fingers, on two, or even on one. So just start with across your hand. And the cool thing is no matter what sport you play, this is a skill that can help you, right? Eye-hand coordination, mm -hmm. balance, focus. Totally. Right, I can't focus on something else, so I have to be in the moment, be where my feet are, be totally present, try and get that Frisbee balancing. Well, I think it's really hard. I'm trying it at home and Ashley is at home watching as well. And she says, good morning. Good morning. And um, she also says she has Riley and Owen watching as well. So hopefully you guys are starting out with Rob with your balance activity as well. Me too. I'm doing it too, Rob. I also have a friend who can balance things like on his nose and on his forehead. He can do a chair. So you might want to start off with a Tupperware lid or Frisbee, but as you get more confident, you can start balancing other items as well. <laughs> Maybe even stand on one foot, try and balance on one foot while you're trying to balance on one hand. Ooh, yeah, I can see how this would help in just about any sport for sure. Exactly. And that's, that's the fun thing about Frisbee is we're trying to make it fun, right? You don't want to make this that this is a practice, like you have to do this. Just want to try and explore different ways to have fun with it. Got it. All right. So what's up next? Twirling? Oh, the last thing you can also balance oh, it like sorry. this, which is pretty easy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, that's twirling. All right. So, the cool thing about a Frisbee is it spins in two directions. So you can either have a Frisbee spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. Oh. So sometimes I ask kids if they still have clocks that go both ways and <laughs> still, still. So you get to teach you know, some math skills maybe or some, um, some social skills. So clockwise and counterclockwise. So the point of this drill is to find out which hand you like the best and which direction you like to twirl the Frisbee the best. Hmm. And so we're going to try and twirl both directions on both hands. The way that you started, and this is why, you know, Tupperware lid might be kind of tricky because you want to have a bit of a lip, a bit of a rim. So we're going to yeah. start by dangling the Frisbee on your finger. You're going to pull it towards you. So I'm going to try clockwise first. And if I can do clockwise, then I'm going to try and do counterclockwise. And then I'm going to try my left hand as well. Trying to go counterclockwise and then 
clockwise. And the cool like thing about this- paper plate is working a little better. <laughs> Maybe not that much better. <laughs> Maybe not that much better. I said my so, paper plate's working a little bit better, but <laughs> I think so, I have some practice to do. Yeah, the, the cool thing about this is it teaches you two main things. So not only do you learn which direction you like to twirl it the most, and also which hand, but you also learn which one you like the least, which one you're not the best at. So it gives you an opportunity to really excel at something, but it also gives you the opportunity to say, hey, I'm not very good at this skill. This is something I can now try and practice and get better at. So for me, I don't really like my left hand clockwise, but I really like the right hand clockwise. Huh. So for me, that's the skill that I like. And it's important to understand clockwise and counterclockwise because when I actually throw a Frisbee, depending on the way that I throw, it's gonna spin either clockwise or counterclockwise. Oh, so yeah. if I'm right-handed and I throw the most basic throw in Frisbee called backhand, that's spinning clockwise. If you're left-handed, you throw backhand, it's spinning counterclockwise. So, so that's twirling on one finger. The next one, this is a little tricky. So now we're gonna to try to switch fingers on the same hand as we're twirling. If you drop it, that's okay. Just pick it up and keep going. I definitely dropped mine a few times over here. <laughs> I think this looked easy, but I've dropped this a lot. <laughs> and you can oh, also and you're twirling on your pinky. You can also oh, yeah. Very cool. So depending on the length of your fingers, so some people have you know a really short ring finger compared to their middle finger, so it might be tricky to go down. But it's something good to practice. Also, if you do a lot of typing on your phone on a computer, this is a really good way to strengthen your fingers, get your fingers relaxed and loosened up a little bit. And there's actually a guy that I, I know from Denmark. He does a lot of shows in China and he does a lot of twirling tricks with kids. So mm -hmm. I'm a rookie compared to him. He's been doing this for 20, 30 years. But so no matter who you are, even if you have six Guinness World Records, you can still learn and get better at skills. Very cool. So next before skill. we move, oh, sorry. I was going to say before we move on to the next one, uh, Christine at home has a question for you. How many tournaments a year do you attend? So good question. So it really depends. Um, if I was only playing Ultimate Frisbee, I could do 10 to 15 tournaments a year. I have some friends that have done 20. If you're playing disc golf, I could do a lot more. So there's a guy in Texas who actually competed in more than 70 disc golf tournaments in one year. So he was competing in a tournament every weekend, sometimes two in a weekend. Ooh. In the overall, which is what I do, um, there's only two overall events every year. If I'm competing in dog disc, there's about, I could do probably six or seven dog disc tournaments every year. So I try to do overall, I do all the overalls. So I was actually supposed to be going to San Diego in uh, July or mm -hmm. August, sorry, this year for competition, which was obviously canceled. Um, and Dog Disc, I had a couple tournaments lined up as well. Got it. Well, in the so, meantime, let's move on to the next skill. Well, so we still have some twirling. So Oh, we still have um, more twirling. Awesome. Yeah, so now that we can do it on one finger, we want to try and switch hands while we're twirling it. So you want to try to not think. The more you think, the harder this trick is. <laughs> I want to try and twirl back and forth. And again, if you drop it, that's okay. Just pick it up and keep going. And something that teaches you as well is that the more you fail, the more that you learn. And I fail all the time because I try more than most, I actually fail more than most people even try. And when you do things like this, you're probably gonna fail a few times and that's totally okay. Yep, absolutely. So the last twirling trick, this one's fun. Um, it really requires a disc with a lip. So you're going to twirl it just like you did normally, except this time you're going to try and twirl it upside down and Ooh. put it off the ground. So you might think that I turned the gravity off or I'm a frisbee wizard or a magician. <laughs> well, fingers. You can also switch fingers as you're twirling it upside down. Wow. It is like magic. So I've had some students in grade three and four get this very, very quickly, but usually it takes, it takes a little while, but the key is to not give up, right? Just keep trying. I like the power of yet, so I haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. Just keep going until you actually get up. So that's twirling. There's a lot of cool things within that, that you can explore and play with. 
Very cool. I also love the power of yet. I also cannot do that yet, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to get, once we get off this uh, Classroom Champions Live, I'm going to give this one a go. Okay. Are we ready for the next skill? Yeah. All right. Brushing, right? Uh, we'll do what catching. Is, we'll do catching. Okay. What we'll is catching? catching? So, so this one has five parts. I'm just going to quickly run through the parts. And so this one is very simple. You can throw with either your right or your left hand. Just a little tiny flick of the wrist. We just want a little bit of spin. And you can either throw under the same leg or the opposite leg. You're just going to try and throw it under your leg and try and catch it. You can do this as fast as you want, as slow as you want. You could keep one leg in the air and just keep going back and forth under it to practice balance. So that's throwing it under the leg. So that one's a pretty simple skill for most people, but it's just really getting that little flick of the wrist down. And I recommend holding the frisbee just like you shake someone's hand, turning it vertical, and then just a little flick of the wrist. Put a little tiny spin on it. Right, because it's not, we don't really want a frisbee doing that, because that's going to be tough to throw and catch. Mm -hmm. So nice control, nice little spin. The next part, we're going to do the opposite of that. So instead of throwing it under the leg, we now want to try and catch it under the leg. So to start, you can start by having your hand under your leg, dropping the disc in your hand. And once you can do that, then you can throw it up and try to catch Ooh. it under your leg. So again, this will help you find out which hand and leg you like the best. For me, I like, oh, sorry. I love how much there is that we can do inside with the Frisbee. I mean, you know, not everybody has all this space to go outside right now. So there's just so many fun things you can do with the Frisbee or the top of a Tupperware. Well, and they did something really cool a couple of weeks ago. I was part of it. I didn't stay very long in the competition, but they did what's called a tiny room challenge or a tiny room battle. And yeah. so you compete in a space like this and you do a bunch of these tricks. So it was the top freestylers in the world doing some really cool freestyle tricks. So if you've ever seen freestyle soccer, or freestyle football, people yep. rolling the soccer ball around, that's basically what they're doing. And so I'm showing you the foundational skills of freestyle. But if you search freestyle frisbee, it's amazing what's actually possible. One of the guys that competes in freestyle frisbee actually performed with Cirque du Soleil doing freestyle. Oh. So cool. Really cool. So oh, that's awesome. You can catch it on your leg. You can also go behind your back. So you can either throw it behind your back. You can also catch it behind your back. And the most fun way to catch behind your back is to, instead of flipping it vertical, you want to flip it flat. As it's coming down, just before it hits you in the head, you're going to duck and try and catch it behind your back. So this one's a lot of fun. At first, you might have it, the frisbee actually land on your back and you're just trapping it. As you get better at this skill, you can try and catch it cleanly without the frisbee touching your back. And this is a hard one because you're not able to see the disc in your hand like you normally would when you catch. So you want to try and keep your eye on the disc as long as possible. And then you learn where your hands need to be so you can catch that disc. So there's some really cool tricks that people do blind, right? They're not able to look at the disc because it's behind them, but because they practice so many times, right? It's that 10,000 hours. You've got to put a lot of practice into this. So that's a fun one. You can also catch it just normally behind your back. Like that. Very so cool. Body awareness, no matter what sport you do, this will help you increase body awareness. Awesome. All right. So that was catching. What's so next? Brushing. Brushing is right. well. So we call this air brushing. So if you ever played tennis before, when you hit the tennis ball, you're not hitting it on necessarily. You're trying to hit it and make the ball spin. So that's really what we're trying to do here is we're not just smacking the disc. We're actually brushing it to make the disc spin. And so you can practice the brush motion. Hold it in your opposite hand, so your non-throwing hand. Brush with your dominant hand along the bottom. So we don't want to hit from the side. We don't want to hit from the bottom. We want to come across the bottom. So the point is to try and brush the bottom to make the frisbee spin. And so if I'm brushing it like this, then when I actually start the throw, I want to be throwing it, and this is clockwise, okay? So I'm going to throw it clockwise, brush it to make it spin. Cool. So if you think of the Frisbee like a clock, the very bottom is six o'clock. 
I want to be brushing it at about 5.30 or 6 o'clock. If the disc starts to drift a little bit, I can bring it back with my opposite hand by hitting it more at like 7 o'clock to bring it back. So I actually did a challenge in one minute. You want to see how many times you can brush the disc. I did 100. I had a couple friends do 120, 130. Ooh, in one minute? World, but... Sorry, what's that? In one minute? Yeah, I did 100 in a minute. Um, wow. I had a friend do like 135 in a minute. He's also a world champion. He's unbelievable. Um, and I don't know, like, I think a lid could work for this. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Works for you. All right, everybody at home, give brushing a try next and see there's how many cool times thing. you can do it. So there's a mini disc. This is something I'm doing a lot more of as well. So this is a mini disc golf basket. Okay. So regular disc golf basket would be about this high. So if you play golf, when your ball is on the green, you would mark the ball with a ball marker. Mm -hmm. So in disc golf, when you come up to your throw that's on the ground, you would actually mark the disc with a mini disc. But we've also made up mini disc golf courses. And so mini discs are a lot of fun for kids, just for any ages. But the cool thing is, is you could go to a playground, if you're allowed to go on playgrounds, with a mini disc and make up a disc golf course. So it's oh, super yeah. fun. You could also play mini disc golf indoors, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have a basket, for example, this could be the hole and I could try and throw in the basket. What if you don't have a basket? So if you don't have a basket, you could use anything. You could use a lamp post. Okay. You could use a chair. Um, these, these discs are really soft. They won't really break anything. You're not really throwing them that hard. But if you don't have a disc, you could also maybe use a, a piece of paper, just balled up, and you could throw that okay. paper. Um, if you have foam balls, you could just play games around the house as well. Perfect. Um, there's, a, there's a series of videos. There's this, a, a family doing an Olympics challenge at home. They're doing a bunch of games at home. Uh huh. So they're using, like, you know, the indoor basketball hoop that's on the back door. They're doing, like, three-point challenges, but they're throwing toilet paper in the basketball net. Um, they're taking like a pee with a straw and they're trying to see who can blow that pee the furthest and the fastest. And so they're just getting awesome. creative. If you have a backyard, you can do all of these tricks outside. And they're actually better outside because with wind, you would hit the disc into the wind, the wind would bring it back to you. So brushing right now is just going up and coming back. But if I'm brushing this into the wind, then it would actually go up and the wind would bring it back. So you could do things like brushing under your leg, brushing behind your back. A lot of really cool things possible. Perfect. All right. Well, I think we have time for one more skill. Can you show us the last skill here? The yeah, combo? So is, is to do a combination, actually. And so if you've ever skateboarded, you can do a combination of tricks, right? You can combine some tricks together. So we know a couple of tricks. And so, for example, I could throw it onto my leg. I could brush it. Uh, and try and catch All right. It. Try it again. So brush it. Catch me on my back. Nice. That is perfect. So we're trying awesome. to come up with a combo. Has to be at least two tricks, but the more okay. that you do, the better it is. Always try and finish with a trick catch. Awesome. I love it. All right. So that was so cool. There are so many fun things that you could, I, I had no idea you could do so many fun things with a Frisbee inside your house. So cool. But let's talk a little bit about, um, so if you don't have a Frisbee, if you don't have a Tupperware, what else can you do? We were thinking about, you know, the, the options of paper airplanes. So you hold the world record for Frisbee throwing distance, right? What about paper airplane distance? I see that. Let's see. It's 69.14 meters or 226 feet and 10 inches is the world record for how far someone can throw a paper airplane. So that would be like throwing from behind the hockey net on one end of the ice and throwing it over the hockey net on the other end of the ice. Whew, crazy. That, I mean, I can't even, I can't even imagine. So you were telling me a little bit about paper throwing, about paper airplane throwing. Tell me about your paper throwing game. Yeah, so I've, I've been paper airplanes a lot as a kid. I had a standard way of doing it. We always thought that, you know, if it was really small and sleek, you could just throw like a bullet through the air. But you actually want to have a plane that glides and flies, kind of like a Frisbee. A fun thing you can do as well, 
is to see how far you can throw a piece of paper, but by dropping it. So it's kind of neat. You just never know what will happen. But a standard way of making a paper airplane is you just basically fold things in half and then just start mirroring what you're doing. So you would fold a piece of paper in half, you then bend it in to make the nose of the plane, and then start folding it from there. And again, everything you do on one side, you do on the other side, and then you would have a nice paper airplane. Perfect. Well, Rob, I just dropped in the chat box a downloadable for kids at home to be able to make a paper airplane. So there's so many different ways to make a paper airplane. This is a very simple one. And we thought it would be really cool if you guys at home could make some paper airplanes, throw them, show us a video of how far you can throw your paper, paper airplane or your Frisbee. Who is that? This is Sailor. So Hi, we'll Sailor. We'll go after Frisbee. Let's see. Sailor, come on. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Oh, good catch. <laughs> good job, Sailor. We love to to let get to know everybody's pets um, on Classroom Champions Live. So super happy to meet Sailor. All right, Rob. We are just about out of time. I'm gonna show everybody the challenge, but what else do you have for us today? Uh, yeah, I was just really, it's about discovering and exploring. Let me just switch my camera back. Okay, sounds good. Join us back back on your other screen. There you are. So I, I was playing Frisbee for about 10 years before I even learned what was possible with Frisbee. So for me, like the third year that I was playing Frisbee, I was doing MTA, which is maximum time loft. So you throw the Frisbee catcher and throw. This was 17 years ago. There was no way that I knew it when I first did it that someday I'd be a five-time world champion. No one even told me when I first did it that there was actually competitions because they didn't know. Yeah. So that would be like somebody going out doing discus for fun, but no one ever telling them that you could actually go to like a track and field competition. So mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is just learning what you don't know. There's still a lot of things I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, still learning every day about things, but that's for me the most powerful thing is if you want to do something, go discover it. You know, when we were younger, there was no Google, right? You had mm -hmm. to ask people, there was no YouTube. And so now with the amount of content we have, it can sometimes be overwhelming. There's just so much content, but really try and think of it like an iceberg, right? The tip is what you actually learn about, but then what's under the water is what you're actually going to do. And so spend more time doing something instead of watching something. There's tons of videos you could spend the rest of your life watching videos and never run out of content, but it's always better, I think, to just go do it yourself. So watch, you know, a couple minute video, learn how to do something, get inspired, get excited, then actually go outside and do it. Um, that's really what I've been trying to do. You know, it's been two months now since we've been on lockdown. Mm -hmm. Kind of wild to think it's been two months already. You know, it's, you look outside and depending where you live, the weather, you know, is obviously different, but for me, it's, getting outside, getting for runs, taking the dog for a walk, throwing Frisbees, just doing things that you enjoy doing because you want to do them, not because you feel like you have to do them. And just being kind to yourself. Um, you know, everybody's in a different situation. And just because someone's in a more difficult situation doesn't mean that, you know, you should change how you're doing things. You just have to adapt to where you are. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing is just try and, you know, recognize where you're at, try and do positive things, things that you enjoy doing. And someday you might become a world champion or go to the Olympics, right? So you Absolutely. never know. What a cool message. I totally agree. And you have inspired our classroom champions teacher, Miss Nosiar, to create a fantastic new PE unit. So you're going to have a bunch of kids doing uh, playing Frisbee uh, in Miss Nosiar's school. So if I can mention, yeah, one thing. So what I'm mm -hmm. trying to do is because curriculums can be very overwhelming. Um, I've been to a lot of schools, been to the phys ed class, talked to the phys ed teacher, and I've seen that big binder. You know, for example, there's a bowling curriculum that's 300 pages. And so what I've, I'm really trying to work on curriculums for Frisbee that are like a one page curriculum per day, very simple, just showing things like this. Um, so I don't know if there's a way for people to find out more about this. I can definitely share. I want to start Frisbee clubs in schools, you know, without teachers and parents being involved. You know, the messages that we're sharing are only going to go so far. So I think it's really important for parents and teachers to really engage those kids, give them opportunities to do to do more with this stuff. 
Absolutely. Well, why don't you tell everyone who's watching how to find you in case sure. they do want to learn about some curriculum or some more skills or watch some more videos? Yeah, the best thing is just frisbeerob.com and I can send curriculums, videos. Um, there's so many things possible with Frisbee. I was just talking to a friend of mine in the Philippines last night and they can't play ultimate. They've already canceled 27 events this year. And so they're trying to figure out other ways to play Frisbee that are allowed. And so they're looking at doing things like what we just, what we just, you know, learned and shared. And so um, that's really what I'm passionate about is promoting, growing, teaching what's possible with Frisbee. So um, yeah, frisbeerob.com, check it out. And uh, awesome. we're doing curriculums for free. So I'll send you all that content for free. I'm just trying to get the, the awareness raised because it's such an easy thing to do. Absolutely. Well, for everyone at home watching, make either a paper airplane or grab a Frisbee or grab your Tupperware. Take a video of you throwing it. We want to see it. We want to see how far it goes. And you can always share it with us just by hashtagging classroom champs. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Rob. We really appreciate it. Ashley really enjoyed it. Thank you, Ashley and Tanya as well. Thanks for being here, you guys. Rob, thank you so much. Everybody at home, we will be back tomorrow. Tiffany will be leading Tasty Tuesday, and it will be all sorts of fun. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for having me on.